Hey y'all, welcome back. I'm Shana Searcy and I am so excited to paint with you today. We are going to be continuing on um, this holiday theme, small paintings of holiday illustrations that can be used for Christmas gifts um, during the holiday season, whether they are cards or gift tags, but we're gonna continue today and I'm gonna be doing, um, let's see, we are gonna have ornaments, so just round ornaments, as well as holiday lights, as well as some trees in these different illustrations. So I've been making tons and tons of holiday cards for a sale that's um, coming up where I offer those as well as paintings at a holiday market in my local area, and I make a lot of cards, and they are usually the first thing to go. Um, people love the cards, so I try to come up with new designs every year. So this year, um, I've been making lots of different ones. So we're going to do some of those here today. So for supplies, I have my a pencil, I have a Micron pen, so as long whatever ink pen you're using, and you don't have to use pen at all. You could do these without any pen whatsoever. But if you like that look and wanna add the pen, uh, make sure it is a permanent uh, waterproof ink. Um, otherwise it might get a little messy and then I'm just using my core watercolor paints whatever paints you have I have some water and a paper towel here and I have a small to medium size brush this is a size uh, 8 um, this is a size 8 silver black velvet brush uh, but whatever brushes you have a round brush will be good if you also have a flat or square brush like this. Uh, this one is a half inch. You could pull this out too. I might do a few trees with this, but you could, I'll show you how to do round and um, trees with a square brush. Mine's a half inch. If I have a smaller one, I don't have a ton of square or um, flat brushes, but I thought I had one that was one size smaller, but that's okay. I'll use the half inch. All right, let's get into it. So the first one we're going to do are some ornaments and I'm going to do three. I'm going to use my pencil just to draw out a circle for myself. Now, if you don't feel confident drawing circles, you can use a compass or some other type of tool um, or just something that's round. So like I have a medicine cup here. I promise that's not medicine. That's masking fluid that was in there. Um, something that's an appropriate size and use it to trace. So. Oh, perfect. I didn't even plan that. I was just going to draw them by hand. Um, they don't all have to be exactly the same size. You can have some that are slightly smaller or larger. There we go. So I just like to sketch out my circles. You can see I go around a couple times till I get that nice round shape. And I've alternated the levels of these. Now for the tops, we are going to put on just a little rectangle at the top, and this is going to be the little brass kind of piece. It's probably not actually brass. It's probably just like tin metal um, that is going to be at the top that holds the ornament and then have a little string going all the way up to the top. This one's a little uneven. There we go. All right, so let's get started. We are going to do these in red. I'm gonna use an alizarin crimson. I feel like this is just a great color. It's got a little depth to it with a blue undertone, um, which would be kind of red reflecting the green of the tree and the lights off of it. All right, so the first layer we're gonna put on is gonna be a pretty light layer. So just taking out my alizarin crimson. I'm gonna rinse my brush off. And oh, I am going to lighten up the edges of my bulbs here. That is not a good pencil. If you have a kneaded eraser, this would be the time to use it. I don't know where mine are. They're all packed away for class. So I'm just going to lighten these outlines up quite a bit so I can see them, but the average viewer should not be able to see them. All right. 
Now I am going to wet with some water the majority. I'm going to leave some spots open with no water on them. But the majority of my round bulb, and I'm going to hold it up for you to see if you can. You can see the light reflection on there. So you're going to see some spots that are flat that have no water in them. Those are going to be highlights. Okay, and it's going to be different kind of for each bulb. The great thing about uh, painting like an ornament is if they're, you know, you're replicating it, not necessarily hanging on the tree because you're not painting the tree in the background, but when it's on a tree, it's got light reflected from all different angles. So there's no one specific place that the light is coming from. I'm going to start on the edges and the spots that have no paint or no water in them, paint is just naturally going to avoid those spots unless you paint over it. So we're kind of just doing a light wash and then while it's still wet, I'm going to introduce a little bit more color to the edges. And this one in the middle here, I'm going to take that one away. I'm going to take this one away. All right. And I'm going to move on to the next one while that's drying. I'm going to wet it first. And you can even do, you don't even have to wet it first. You could just do a light wash. So you can see I have um, a light, very, very light pink shade of color from my red. I'm just going to do a very light wash. I'm going to leave two spots kind of bigger open. And now I'm going to bring in more color and same thing, wet on wet while it's still wet around the edges. I want the edges to be the darkest. So I'm kind of working from the edges out. I'm going to add a few more layers onto this as I go. And then here we'll do this one. I do like putting down this kind of this first wash layer. And we'll put a little edge around this side. So you can definitely still have highlights on your edges or towards the edge, but the area where there is no highlight around the edge because the ball is rounded is going to be the darkest. All right, now these are continuing to dry. I'm gonna take some more alizarin crimson and I'm gonna take a little bit of green. I have a little sap green and I'm just going to desaturate this color a little bit so you can see how it becomes more of a maroon earthy earth tone color and I'm wearing a white sweater and painting with red paint let me pull my sleeves up hold on one second because of course this is brand new I have worn it once currently this is the first time I've worn it and I am going to ruin it <laughs> the life of an artist And while these are still wet this one time, I'm going to add in a little bit more of a neutral red in just a few spots. I'm dropping it in. It's going to travel because these are still very wet. But I want to start building up some shadows. And we're going to let all of this dry and we're going to add another layer on top to really deepen some of the darkest shadow areas. And that's really going to give it a lot of pop. But once you get going on these, you can kind of crank out. Sometimes it's a bunch of them all at once. Sometimes it's best if you're not thinking too heavily about it. You still want to be sparing. You don't want to just end up doing a whole full flat wash on it. You need to preserve highlights and build in shadows. But you can see. And mine aren't even like super perfectly round anymore. I don't know if you see that. I've definitely gone like outside. They're a little wonky. I'm totally fine with that. These are going to be fun. 
like that shabby chic look. Everything has is a little bit off. Throw in some dark color here, some dark color kind of right in the middle, spiraling out. I did do this one highlight on the edge, but I'm putting in like the very edge. See that? That's a little long, so I'm going to close that up a little bit. A little bit more paint, red and green, just to get some darker pigment. All right, let all of this dry. And then we'll move on to our next one before we come back for the next layer on this. So again, you can see I'm just dropping in little bits of extra color. And you can see how they're starting to get that mottled look where you're gonna have highlights and shadows and it's gonna look like light is bouncing and reflecting off of different areas. All right, so we're gonna set those aside and let them dry completely. And we are gonna move on to some Christmas lights, I think. Okay, so we're gonna do holiday lights, Christmas lights, and this one is a little bit drawing heavy, but it's super simple. You just have to draw a lot of things. So I am going to just do a string, kind of a wavy string of lights across the bottom here. My goal with this particular design is to get four bulbs in. So I'm going to put in these box kind of rectangles that have a couple lines in them. So you can see that it's just a rectangle and I threw some lines in it to simulate that like threaded kind of crimp of a light bulb, even though these are attached to a string, they're not being threaded or screwed into anything. So one, two, three, get one more right over here, four. There you go. So you can see those super easy. And then the bulb itself is going to be, if you want to do these in pencil first, you can, but it's going to be like an egg shape but with like a little bit of a point on the top. Okay. So it's got just, it's like an egg shape, but at the top it comes to this little kind of rounded point. So egg. And then you're going to draw that in with, now you don't have to draw these in an in ink. You could do this whole thing without any ink. I'm going to draw it in with ink just to give it more of that illustrative. I didn't make my top to that very round. Kind of cartoonish look. I want that look. That's what I'm going for. All right, so now we have our bulbs drawn in. You could put something, you could have this be this way or this way. You could do your bulbs in a different kind of configuration. I could um, add a stamp on the top here. So depending which way I want to hold this, let's see, do we want it to be up or down? Let's do it down. We will, I have a little stamp and a stamp pad here. If you are proficient at hand lettering, you could hand letter that in here. I would recommend a uh, hot press paper for your watercolor if you're also going to be adding hand lettering. It's just easier. There we go. Happy holidays. Stamps work great on cold press. I love the kind of um, faded a little bit look to some of the areas. I try not to press too, too hard. I like that look. Okay, I digress. Let's get back to color choice. So we're going to go with some traditional um, bulb colors. So we're gonna do a phthalo blue, this really pretty blue color. 
I'm going to do a red. And let's see, am I going to go with cadmium red this time? Oh, my cadmium red is dirty. Or alizarin crimson. You know, I'm going to go with the cadmium, a more traditional red color. Cadmium red. I am going to use my cadmium yellow and I think green, but I'm going to use a, so cadmium yellow, and then I'm going to use a green. This is a Viridian green, so it's more of a cool bluish green rather than a warm kind of earthy sap green. There we go. So these are like those traditional, I don't want to say traditional, that's not quite, like um, nostalgic, reminiscent of like the 60s, like color, big, the big chunky bulbs there. All right, so we have our colors. I'm going to start painting these by first doing a light wash. So I'm going to put my, well, actually, I'm going to put my red down. We're going to start with our red. And I am going to look to save some highlights. In this bulb, so you can see I kind of outlines those highlights. I'm going to add a little bit more red up here. And now I'm just going to rinse off my brush. blend this out. I want some variation in color, highlight, to give it this glowing feel. Use the quality of the watercolor to play into the glow and feel. And don't worry, we're going to add some color on the outside as well too, but we're going to let that dry first while we move on to our next color. Let's see. I think I'm going to do, I'm going to do the blue and the red on opposite ends. So I'm going to do green. I'm not a big, huge fan of this core green. So I'm using core of this uh, particular green but it'll work. It's not quite as vibrant as I would want it. And normally I hate a vibrant green, but in this particular case, I need a vibrant green. So I'm playing up my highlights. I put them in slightly different areas than the first one. I'm just blending out with a clean brush. We'll change the shape of that highlight right there. Okay. And now I'm going to take some more color I'm going to add a little bit of phthalo blue to this green, actually, and some cadmium. Maybe I should have just made my own green. So I just mixed phthalo and cadmium yellow to this green to just get a little bit more vibrancy. You can see it's a little bit darker, a little bit more vibrant. Go. I'm going to let that dry. And if you get too much color in and you need to pull it out, that's okay. You just run a damp, clean brush over your color and pull some out. All right, so now we're going to go to yellow. I am green kind of spilling over into my yellow, so make sure that's out of there. And same thing with the yellow. Yellow's the one that's the hardest to kind of tell that it's darker and that there's a highlight saved. Like there is a highlight in there, I promise. But because it's such a light color to begin with, it's a little harder to tell. And you could even, like I'm using cadmium yellow for this part, but I'm even going to add... And you can just leave it like this. I'm going to pick up some of my Dyrolide yellow, which is 
like a warm gamboge yellow. I'm just gonna drop a little bit of that into a few of the edges. So I got an even darker color. It just helps with that contrast to the highlight. It's so hard to see to get like a medium, a dark, a medium, and a highlight tone like you can with these really easily. So just adding a little bit darker yellow in there. And then lastly, our phthalo blue. This color is so strong and so vibrant. I'll put my highlight like on the other side. You gotta be careful with it that you don't get too dark in all of the spaces. So just a clean brush. And then dropping in some darker color. And if you need to let these dry and then do another layer, because you tend to paint a lot lighter and you have trouble getting this vibrancy right away, that's totally fine. Look how nicely that pulls out of there. Just building up this darker color like around the edge here and I'll put a little bit right there okay we're gonna let that dry and then we're gonna come back here to the red which is dry now and I'm gonna go ahead get a nice clean brush and I'm gonna take just some water put it right around the edge So I'm just doing, let's see if you can see that via the reflection, barely, but you can see I have like just a, about maybe a half inch of water dampness around the bulb, maybe a little between a half and a quarter inch, like not too, too far. Then I'm just going to take a little bit of the red and kind of go along the edge here. And I want this to be lighter than the bulb itself because it's like the light or the glow that it's casting off. Now I'm just adding a little bit more water to the edges. There we go. I'm gonna let that dry. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the green. Again, just water. It's okay. I'm okay with it touching like the edge of um, the color that's already there even if it bleeds a little bit because that's exactly what I'm gonna get it to do let's bleed off the edge a little bit and the yellow and the green are gonna mix and mingle a little bit right here because they're a little closer together and that's okay too There we go. And last but not least, and same thing with blue and yellow. And my blue is still a little damp. So even when I just touch the edge, it's just going to come right off of there. And you could do it that way as well. I just find you have a little bit more control when you let everything dry. We'll let these kind of mix their colors here a little bit. And then add add it so saying you have a little bit more control when you let everything dry really well and then kind of add this glowing reflection and then you are pretty much done and you can go darker if you need to go darker I'm gonna add a little bit more red to this one just around the edge let that bleed out okay so last but not least, you can add some color to this top area here, this little bit. You can make it gray if you wanted to um, just make it look like metal. Or I'm going to add a little of this yellow ochre, which I think gives it a little gold look to it. 
So I'm just adding in a few little bits, but I'm not painting the whole thing in. And I'm gonna go back with water and just a damp brush and just kind of blend it out. So these have highlights on them too. So if they were like brass, like a brassy color, they would have highlights and shadows as well. So they're gonna have lighter areas and darker areas. And you can go in and play this up with the pen and draw in some more shadows if you want. Take some paint gray, I just put a little paint gray on my brush to just darken up a few areas. But I like that kind of gold brassy look. All right, so there are our Christmas holiday lights for the tree. Happy holidays, we put a little stamp on there. Let's go back to our Christmas bulbs and add another layer to really darken this color. So I just gotta clean out this red a little bit here and I'm gonna put alizarin crimson back in here. And before I used alizarin crimson and a little sap green, and now I'm also going to use, so you can see it just dulls that color a little bit, makes it a little more earthy. I'm gonna add a little bit of Payne's Gray. So I have this really dark, rich color along with some straight alizarin crimson over here. So I have a little bit of that there. All right, so I'm gonna come back in around my edges. Rinsing off my brush. Go ahead and blend it out, kind of like I just did with the light bulbs. Working around some of my highlights actually going to go over some of the highlights there too, but they're still lighter because I'm putting a very light blend of water or a light wash over top of them. All right, and then I'm going to take some of this darker color and I'm going to play up some of these shadowed areas with my, my Payne's Gray and Alizarin Crimson combination. There we go. And I'm gonna go do the same thing over here. Start with some alizarin crimson. Go into these some of these darker areas, trying to preserve some of my highlights. So rinse off my brush, come back in with just a damp brush and blend these out. So we're getting the whole bulb wet again with a light wash of paint and water. And then I'm coming back in with this darker color and to some of the shadowed areas, not all, but adding even this darker, richer alizarin crimson, Payne's gray, and a tiny bit of sap green mixture. And the darker you get just a few areas, the more it's gonna really make those highlights start to pop. All right, same thing with our last one, alizarin crimson. Looking at where I had some of the darker shadowed areas from my original painting, adding some color there. Blending it out with just some water. This is where you do have to have water control. You wanna have enough water that it gets the whole area damp, but you're not making huge puddles where everything is kind of running amok on your page. And then with our darker color, really going back into those areas that were deepest in shadow. So this requires two layers, both wet on wet. I'm gonna go right around this edge here. There we go. All right, and then we're also going to do the tops here. These, I would normally let this dry completely. I'm gonna turn it upside down so I can work on here. You can see I've kind of made a mess of my page, but I'm gonna go ahead with this gold color. It's just yellow. Um, ochre 
but when put up against these other colors, it kind of gives this gold brassy color. Just painting that in, leaving a few spots for highlights, little white peeps through. And then I'm going to go through afterward and add some embellishment with my ink. Gold threads as well. So there we are, our holiday bulbs. So we have two great examples. And now I'm going to go in and do one more. This one is really simple um, and you should have some type of greeting in there, but we're going to do bulbs on the top and trees on the bottom. Uh, so let me go ahead and add some, and we're actually going to do ours this way. So again, if you are proficient at hand lettering, this is where you will shine. I am not something I just kind of gave up on. So I'm just going to stamp a little greeting there. I have all different kinds, but we're going to go ahead and put, I'm going to go with blue. So we have our phthalo blue here, but I want to do, I'm, I have some indigo in my palette, some indigo blue, which is like this rich navy color. Here you go. I'm going to use indigo. So for my bulbs, they're just circles. I'm going to go across. I'm not going to draw anything out. I'm just going to make light wash circles. You can leave some white spots. So I left a white spot in there and some of them try to vary it. These are tiny, so you know, you can't get too crazy. And I'm going to do varying heights. You could do varying sizes too, but I'm going to keep mine all relatively the same size. These about the same height, slightly varied. Do another one up here, another one kind of further down. And you can see I'm kind of like running out of paint and they're getting lighter as I go. That's okay. All right. And now as they're drying and they got kind of bigger as we went along, I'm going to make this one a little bit bigger. As they're drying, we don't want them to be completely dry, but we don't want them to be super wet either. As they're in various stages of drying, we're going to go ahead and add some really dark colors. And we're just going to work our way back through each of them and leaving some spots that are lighter and darker just like we did on the larger ones, but we're working on a really small scale here. So you just have to kind of throw some color in, in various areas and blend it out. Not be too picky about it. They're so tiny. You just want them to look like they have highlights and shadows. All right, and then for our trees, I'm gonna use sap green. So I'm just gonna clean out most of this green here. There's a little bit left, that's okay for me anyway. So I'm gonna pick up my sap green. You can see it's a much warmer, more yellowy green. I'm gonna add a little bit of phthalo to it. So we have this nice deep, forest green color. I'm running out of sap green. All right, and then along the bottom, we're gonna do our trees. And now trees, I have whole videos on trees, but we're going to, you can do them. You're just gonna start at the top. A tree is a triangle, but it's just a whole bunch of little dots and dabs kind of put together in a zigzaggy pattern 
back and forth, leaving little gaps. Add a little water. And you can do trees in a lot of different ways, but this is how I'm doing these. So I'm just going all the way across the bottom, varying heights, just like the bulbs. Some are a little bit taller, some are a little bit shorter, just so it's not a perfect kind of straight shot across. So I do this with a round brush and it's just like a little straight line and then dab, 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 crisscross, crisscross. And I'm using like a 45 degree angle with my brush and you can see leaving little gaps for white areas. And then you can do this with a square brush. Let's see, I don't have a small square readily available. I know I have one somewhere. Don't know why I can't find it right now, but this is a half inch one. And I'm just gonna take, I need the top to be nice and flat and put together. And I'm just going to use it perpendicular and then I'm gonna start to angle it this way and that. And it just gives you a whole different look for a tree. You can use a fan brush for this. So this way, because it's um, not a lot of paint, I'll go a little taller with this one. So you can see, move my hand out of the way a little bit, but I'm just using the very top of the angle of the brush, the very top of the brush. I'm just kind of rocking back and forth and dabbing in and out. Some folks prefer the look of the round brush. Some folks prefer the look of the square. Some prefer um, their ability to be able to get the look they're looking for with the square and find it easier. Others like a little bit more control of the round. So I would have a little bit more control over the shape of this if I had uh, a slightly smaller square brush. Make this one a little bit bigger. All the way to the edge. There we go. So we have a nice little forest at the bottom. And the last thing, and of course I dip my finger in my wet paint. But the last thing you need to do is put some um, toppers on. If you have a, sorry, if you have a magic eraser, so like the kitchen sponge magic eraser, that'll take that right off by just dabbing it very gently. I just did it with water um, for now. But if you, I'm going to do mine in pen. You could do these in gold if you want, like we did with the other ones. I'm going to do these in black. Just putting a little square on top. I'm not gonna color the whole thing in. I'm just gonna put a few lines in there to make it look crimpy and then bring it right to the top. Gold does look really nice with these with the blue color or um, yellow ochre, I should say. But that yellowish gold color. And then if you wanted, you can also use your pen to do an exaggerated like outline on these. This one is very wet still. So you could go around and like circle these with the pen and kind of draw inside them. These are still a little wet to do this, but it just gives it another kind of look and feel. Again, always optional. I'm not going to do it on that last one. All right. So that is our last little design there with the bulbs and the trees. So this one, you could definitely stamp something right across it. Um, whether it's like right in the middle here, I will just take the one stamp I have at my disposal right now, or again, hand letter something. 
I'm just going to put happy holidays right across the middle there. And then last but not least, we have our, uh, our Christmas bulbs here. So thank you so much. I hope you found this useful and we're, are able to apply some of these techniques and styles and designs to your own holiday Christmas decor, whether that's gift tags or um, making your own Christmas cards or just making little decorative paintings for uh, to add to your Christmas Christmas decor collection. Um, I hope you found this helpful. So once again, I'm Shana Searcy. Don't forget to check the description of this video uh, for links to supplies and materials, as well as links to my Studio Crew classroom. If you um, also want to find me on social media, you can find me there as well. Happy painting, y'all!